And okay, all righty, let's pray. Father God, I thank you, Lord, this this afternoon. Lord, you are so good to us and around us. Lord, we just thank you so much for what you are doing and how, Lord, I need your help to go over this. This is this is so exciting, and I just thank you for it. Lord, may we catch this. We just give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Okay, I have an issue. Okay, so everybody said, we knew this. Everybody says, we got it. It's going to be one of those days, I can tell. All right. <laughs> no, um, this last week, I was able to go over uh, um, some scripture with um, somebody that was, and it occurred to me that I had never done this with the group. And so it was one of these things that I thought, wow, this is something really we need to do. And then it kind of, what it always does, it blew up on me. So anyway, I'm going to be doing a um, a very, the shortest possible version of the beginning of this series. It may be a series of only two. I don't know. We'll see what happens here. But we're just going to have some fun here. It is time for us to do this because this is like perfect timing in what's happening in our country and around the world. So, <laughs> that being said, here's our issue. Is that we need to learn how to deal with our body. We've, we've got so much that we can talk about, okay, but we need to talk about the complete person. We have... Now that we, we know, well, we talk about the spirit all the time. <laughs> That's kind of like our main forte. And, of course, along with it, not even maybe even second place, but really along closely, we closely, continually look at the soul. <laughs> we even know about hearts and kidneys, both being mm -hmm. spiritual. You know, <laughs> come on, we know, we know all this stuff. We're pretty good, okay? But is there hope for our bodies? So, what have we been really, you know, what's the scripture have to say about this, okay? Our tendency is just to give up and take it, okay? I'm, I'm saved in my spirit, I'm in the process of being saved in my soul, and if I just die with my, my body just dies, I'll be fine, you know? And you can't argue with that, that's, you're right. But, we're here in our bodies, okay? So, what's the, what's the issue? Are we just doomed to get old and decrepit? Okay. There is so much more hope than that. Okay. So we've got to learn about what to do about our bodies and what the scripture says about it. So this is going to be really very interesting for us and everybody here can really apply this on a regular basis. Remember when Jesus was around, okay, and you read about it in the, the word, he healed them all. Not once did he say, Nope, I can't heal you. Mm -hmm. Not once did he say, no, I'm not going to heal you. Not once did he stop. He healed them all. So we know that God's will is healing. Okay? So we know that there's, there's good stuff. Well, we know that we lay hands on folks and pray. That's kind of a thing that we try to do. Okay? So people are sick. Fine. We just stop. Well, we've learned how to do other things more than just lay hands on people and pray. You know? I haven't anointed somebody with oil in my office since I don't know when. I really, I just, you know, do we pray in tongues? Yeah, there are times. Do we lay hands on people? Yeah, yeah. And do we pray? Yeah, yeah. Do we command things? Yeah, sure. But what do we normally do? We normally go for the root because just trying to heal a symptom doesn't do anything for me. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure we get the root. I've known too many people that have been healed and then two months later, same disease right back at them. Why? Because they were healed of the symptoms, not healed of the disease. So that's kind of a, an issue for me. And Jesus did say that. He said, lest something worse come upon you, or lest it, something else come upon you. He said, you know, certain things. So we know that this stuff can happen. Okay, just because there's a healing doesn't mean it's always total to the end. We know that there's an anointing for healing. We know that that's what it says that. Okay. There she is. And other people with them. All right. Uh, we're short of chair, honey. Nope, we got another one right there. There we go. There, there's your chair. 
Okay. Now we know according to, to the scripture that there's an actual manifestation of the Holy Spirit called gifts of healing. Okay? And that, that hits in so many ways. And we've, we've hit this thing about healing on a regular basis. Okay? It's a big deal to hit this thing about healing. Okay? And of course then we go to conferences and we go to healers and the man of God and we go to all these places to get this stuff done. And this has been a constant story for all of us. Okay, I've, I think I've heard this from so many of us that we've gone to somebody for healing, gone to get, you know. That's all good. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, but when healing doesn't happen, <laughs> the condemnation that comes from that is immense and horrible. I have been there. I've gone to so many things with a certain thing that I was there to get healed. Ah, that was my goal. I was there to get this thing healed. I was there, uh, and the Lord knew it. Of course, the Lord knows everything, but I was making sure the Lord knew that because I had been in His face telling Him, I'm going to this thing to get healed from this specific thing. I have sat in these conferences where every person around me gets healed, and I was untouched. I've been in healing lines where they've gone down the line and boom, pow, boom, pow, boom, pow, nothing, boom, pow, boom, pow. I just did I've had those. It is so irritating. I can't even begin to tell you how irritating that was. And if I just had the discernment at the time, if I'd just been able to look at Jesus at the time, I'd know that he'd be laughing. He was enjoying himself most thoroughly. Why? Because he was showing me something that was deeper than just boom, whap, and getting wiped out and there was something deeper that he wanted to do and so but healing doesn't always happen anybody relate to that anybody the right people come to the room all right okay all sorts of condemnation when that happens okay we've heard about people who condemned the person who wasn't healed the the person who had the sickness that you don't have enough faith Mm -hmm. and they've condemned the sick person that's sick (laughs) <laughs> to put it okay <laughs> and then we also know of certain ministries that condemn the minister that when a person isn't healed uh, there's one specific ministry if a person is not healed in 30 days they remove the minister oh really yeah they say yep you don't have the faith you don't have something something wrong and you're done so we've seen this condemnation go both ways right <laughs> So, I felt it all. I've been there, you know, when people, we have a, a neat happening in the office here, and it just you can feel the presence of God, and they, they get a healing, and you can see it happen. It's really cool. And then they say, well, how long is this going to last? Ooh, what? Well, why did you heal that, and you couldn't heal this other thing? Mm-hmm. I've gotten that condemnation, okay? So it goes all sorts of directions. So, anybody... Want to be a minister? Yeah, now that I've completely made so, nobody wants to do that ever again. Okay, (laughs) that was good. Thank you, Lee, for that wonderful thing. All right. (laughs) And so what happens mostly is we get into despair or we get our faith damaged. I guess God wants to heal everybody but me. Mm -hmm. That has been a common common statement, common thing happen, and that is just very, very difficult. So, we tend to just give up and take it. <coughs> hmm. I have, I have long since quit the give up and take it thing. There's got to be something else, something I'm missing somewhere. I've gotten to the point of knowing that it wasn't Jesus' fault. <laughs> God didn't make a mistake. Uh, who did? I have figured out that if there's a mistake that's being happening, it's on my part, not on God's part. Anybody relate to that? You following me? So I condemn myself pretty severely. Is that what God wanted? No. No, no. It seems like a lot of work and little reward. Anybody been there? Am I, am I building this beginning premise good enough? <laughs> Harry's going, yeah, shut up and get on with <laughs> it. Okay. Okay, well, okay. We go through life disbelieving that it'll happen. And that's really, really sad. Or we blame ourselves by lack of faith. Or we blame somebody else. We blame this. As soon as you start getting to the blame game, there's going to be a problem, huh? It's going to be bad. It's just not good enough. 
And so this whole scenario about this has got me to the point where I'm going, no, there's got to be more. We've got to be having something, okay? And this isn't going to be a whole series on healing. No, this is on something a little bit different. Because I'm tired of feeling weak and powerless. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. Feeling that? Okay. If it works for some, but not for me, I'm, I'm done. I am, I'm just done. Well, that is what they call a defeatist attitude. <laughs> okay. Just defeated. <laughs> Isn't there more hope than that? Don't I know a, a better... I don't know Jesus better than that. I mean, you can just feel that this thing is not how Jesus would be wanting it to be understood. Okay, just there's got to be more than that. So, is there more in the Scripture? Well, that's where you know that I will tend to always go. There's, there's, yes, okay, yeah, that's I will always go for the Word because there's got to be more information given. Have we misread it? Have we missed? understood it have we what's going on well it's time to look a little bit closer it's time to look at these scriptures a little bit closer and see what the Lord is really trying to say here okay now what is really wild is we've seen these passages as we've been walking through the different series and stuff we've seen these it isn't like this is going to come and everybody says that wasn't in the word no we've talked about these this is something that just and that's what tickles me <laughs> have you ever noticed that the word of God kind of uh you know, you can be hammered on. You just have a verse down, just have it set, and then all of a sudden the Lord just changed the whole thing on you. And I was just, you know, it just comes. Ah, I love it when He does that, and it's so frustrating. Okay, <laughs> just like uh, I love it. It's just really good. So we've seen these passages before. And now it's time to look with fresh eyes, and pun intended. <laughs> We're talking about the body, right? So, fresh. I was going to say pun not intended, but y'all know that every pun there is. Is intended. It's all good. Okay, so so let's let your faith be stronger. Let's figure out the Word of God here. Okay, yeah. this is going. You ready for this little ride? It's gonna be good. Matthew chapter six, twenty-two through twenty-three. Okay, we've hit this passage so many times in every series, and as soon as I bring this up, you're all gonna look at it and go, "Oh yeah, we've we've looked at that over and over and over again." Okay. The lamp of the body is the eye. Then if your eye is sound, all your body is light. But if your eye is evil, all your body is dark. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness. Okay, slow down a little bit here, Lee. Let's back up. The lamp of the what? Body. The body. Now, what is the topic here? Okay, so this is kind of a, a big deal. The lamp of the body is the eye. Then if your eye is sound, then all your body is light. But if your eye is evil, all your body is dark. If then the light in you is darkness, what's that say? If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? <coughs> Let's think about this for a second. <laughs> we have known for how long that the body is the lowest form of of authority. Mm -hmm. The physical is the lowest form of authority. Now, all medicine, all physics, all that stuff is just the study of the physical realm. And it's the lowest form of reality. Mm -hmm. That's kind of interesting. Well, if that's true, then our bodies, which house so much more, hmm, our bodies should be affected by what we are doing in the spirit realm and in the soul realm. <laughs> so this is kind of interesting. The lamp of the body is the eye. Then if your eye is sound, all your body is light. Now, is he talking about physical eye? Mm -hmm. Yes, a little. Mm -hmm. Yes, a sum. Okay? Yes, a sum. Yes, a, sum. <laughs> a little bit of sum. Amen. That's my little accent to come out of there, okay? No, it is sum. Okay? <laughs> And that's what makes it fun. Is it, is it just soulish and just spiritual? No, no. It's the use of our physical eyes in many ways that promotes what is happening in our soul or our spirit. Anybody who has ever looked at porn will tell you that. Because the more you think about it, we have physically looked at something that was a physical thing and it affected our soul in massive ways of darkness. 
Yep. So we can't just discount the physical. Mm, no. Come on, this is really good, huh? Yeah, see? Uh, yeah. Okay. If you see things you want, yeah. that's envy. Yeah. That's right. If you see things you want, that's envy. <laughs> that's, hmm. If you, you know. We can start talking about lust because sexual lust is only a subcategory of this thing called lust. Huge thing. Lust is, okay, what are you looking at? What things do you want and do you desire? Do you mm -hmm. see? What things do you covet that somebody else has? Mm -hmm. If only I had that kind of a thing. Now you understand, what is that? That is using a physical eye in a soulish darkness. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Okay. The eye is where you focus your attention. It is what you consider important. <laughs> so, what you look for, what you look to for comfort, is one way of looking at. Now, we've looked at this as the eye of worship. Okay. Okay, worship, yeah, that's a good good word, but let's look at some other ways of looking at it, okay? What you look to for comfort, okay, is something that you are putting all your trust in. That makes it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it makes it false worship. What you submit to for its power. You know, we do this. Um, <laughs> I might as well, if I'm going to be getting in trouble, might as well get into big trouble. Anybody here ever do comfort food? Oh, God. Oh, geez. No. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. Okay. Never Just oh. ever heard of it? Oh, it's something to look into, brother. Okay, <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that leading your brother's track? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but oh. you got to know that Lee just said that right after Roxanne put all these Girl Scout cookies out on the table. <laughs> I, uh, mm -hmm, we're bad. Okay. <laughs> comfort food. What are we looking for? Okay. We're looking for some external thing to bring comfort to our soul. Right. Two. Okay. Yes, I see that. We get to preach another 20 minutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's the rules. If I see a yawn. We're going forever. Okay. If you focus on what isn't Jesus or His, mm -hmm. anytime you focus on something that isn't Jesus or something of Him, right? This is going to be trouble. What is that? Well, it's simple. Jesus said, I am the what of the world? Light. Therefore, Light. it's darkness if it's not Him or His. Ouch. Selah. Okay, what we focus on affects us. So therefore, if it's not him or his, it is a darkness. And if the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Mm -hmm. Now, does that affect our physical bodies? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> so, when we do these things that take Jesus out of it, then we're wondering how come Jesus hasn't healed us. Mm-hmm. Anybody following my logic here? This is kind of like, oh, well, that's not real smart. <laughs> okay. Are we making sense so far? Mm, totally. I'm, I'm, <laughs> Hi, Jennifer. How are you? Hi, Lee. Thank you. <laughs> We're doing fine, aren't we? Yes? Yes. Okay. What have we focused on that isn't his light? What have we focused on that isn't his light? Now, I, folks, i got to let you know. I mean, this is... You know as well as I do. I will have told you this through everything that no teaching that I ever do is because I am coming from a place of absolute perfect strength that I have got this conquered. Because that's not I know, I checked for possible. I know I it and I wasn't I wasn't resurrected yet. Well I had I had obtained resurrection totally at two o'clock, but but since you were late you missed it. Oh. So, oh, man. so you dropped the ball. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I think I just said that all right here, right now. Okay. Uh, okay. Just like that darkness affects our bodies. So we walk in a darkness that affects our bodies. Then we wonder how come there's sickness and disease in our bodies. That was a heavy side, Jennifer. That was. <laughs> I got that one too. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All sickness comes from sin and the fall. All sickness does. Mm -hmm. So people say, why was this person sick? Yes. Because of sin? 
And you say, oh, you're going to condemn them for the sin? No, might not have been their sin. But it all came from sin. Mm-hmm. Got it? Mm-hmm. Makes sense. It all comes from sin because there was no sickness before sin. Mm-hmm. How healthy was Adam? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was right up there, man. But after he fell, mm-hmm. okay, now it took him 930 years to die. That's just ridiculous. But he still started dying. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he says, in the day you eat of it, dying you will die. Boom. Now, what what did Satan use to tempt Eve? She saw that it was good to be wise and good for food. So she saw with her eye, and the eye became darkness. Okay. <laughs> Have we wrapped this thing up? <laughs> Wonderful. Well, okay. We keep looking for outside influences, okay? And we must. But here's the thing. It's the lies we believe that are extremely powerful. Okay? They are very, very powerful. So what are we looking at as saying, yes, that is important. That is wonderful. That is what I want. That is what I need. <laughs> okay? And uh, there is just... <laughs> Rox and I were traveling, we're driving around, and it just isn't hard driving down the road, minding your own business, having a wonderful conversation, and you see a billboard with fried chicken on it. And I tell you, just like, <laughs> then you start drooling, and it's just, who's we? Yeah, just the, the ball guy starts drooling, okay? And I just like, yeah. I just, I can be affected by something so simple, mm-hmm. okay? Um, just watching TV. And the ads come on. Of course, the food never looks like that in a restaurant. Ever. Ever. But, man, it looks sure good on there. It's just like... And there's something about those guys from Carl's Jr.'s and they're eating this huge... Like this, and they're just slobbing. It's if you don't make a mess, it's not worth it. I know it's just... Yes! Okay. (laughs) Okay. She can relate. (laughs) So, well, what are they doing? Because the lust power Mm -hmm. gets our eyes off of what God has supplied into something we want. Or lust actually says, without that, I'm not good enough. So I need that to make myself good. And that's how they advertise advertise Mm -hmm. it. Okay, so, yeah. Yeah, you deserve a break today. Okay, Mm -hmm. all this. (coughs) Excuse me. So all these things capture our attention, and they, may, they help us to focus on these things. It's very difficult to walk away from our lies. Now, mm-hmm. you say, why did you bring up the lies thing? Well, are we done with that yet? Yes, Roxanne says we should all be done with our lies by now, guys. Just want to let you know. Okay. <laughs> Nope, not going to do it. I, have, I was, I was going to be naughty. I'll be nice. Okay. Ah, okay. It's very simple. Have you ever considered that you're just not good enough? That you're not valuable enough? That you... Okay. Come on. We've considered all these lies about ourselves that you we are dumb or ugly or stupid or have something wrong and all this other stuff. We've listened to these lies over and over and over and over again and we believed them. And what's sad is most of these lies we've told ourselves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, if somebody wants to call me ugly, I have to... What? He who controls the interpretation determines the future. I listen to what they say and determine, must know what they're talking about, therefore it must be true, and I buy their lie, and then what do I say? I'm ugly. Mm-hmm. Why do I say it? Mm-hmm. I got convinced, therefore I am speaking mm-hmm. the lies. How many of the different things that are happening in our bodies have we taken on are there because of the lies that we've had? Okay, that we've focused on them, and that has determined the frequencies that our bodies have been living in because it's the frequencies of darkness, not the frequencies of light. We've been talking about this for how long, right? And it's just like, but now we're trying to get this idea. Okay, the lamp of the body is the eye. Okay, it's very difficult to walk away from all of our lies, okay, unless we focus on His light. How many of you at a time when you've had an encounter with Jesus Christ 
did you sit there and argue with him that you didn't want that light? <laughs> I have yet to have somebody when they start experiencing the light and they're sitting there experiencing what's happening there, they don't fight him. Mm -hmm. no. The lie just poof, disappears. Why? Because lies are all part of the darkness. Uh, a lie, a manifestation of the darkness is deception. And you can write that one down. Manifestation of darkness is a deception. And so all of our lives are things that live in the dark. Mm -hmm. If we can shine a light on them, they melt. Mm -hmm. Am I making sense so far? Totally. This is only totally. the first scripture so far. This is echo. Okay. Our bodies can be filled with light. What's that look like? Now see, that's something I've been trying to experiment with. I've been playing with this. This is something I've been playing with. And I've been enjoying what I've seen so far. Okay, am I, am I totally healed yet? Nope, still working on some things. <laughs> okay, but I'm so much better than I have been in so many times in our lives in certain areas. Okay, so it's kind of neat. Our bodies can be filled with light. Now, here's where I go from preaching to meddling. You ready for this? Here we go. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Haven't you been meddling so far? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's just between you and me, Dennis. That's it. Just, just us. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Light, spirit, love, life are all interchangeable. So if the light within us is darkness, how great is the darkness? If the life within us is death, how great is the death? If the spirit within us is flesh, how great is the flesh? If the love within us is lust, how great is the lust? Anybody want me to repeat all those? No, I'll do it anyway. Okay, if the light within us is darkness, how great is the darkness? That's right out of the verse. But if these are interchangeable, then if the spirit within us is flesh, if that's what we're looking for, our, our spiritual stuff is our flesh, how great is that flesh? If the love within us is lust, how great is that lust? If the life within us is death, how great is that death? Wow. So if we get nothing else out of this one, if we get that one, as they are interchangeably usable in Scripture, understanding what's in your body. Therefore, if in your body is darkness, flesh, death, and lust, no wonder we're sick. No wonder we're sick. Meaning what? We can change any one of the darknesses to light. We can change any one of the spirit, or the flesh to spirit. We can change any one of the lusts to love. And we can change any one of the deaths to life. We have the power. We have that ability. <laughs> See? Amen. Selah. This is, think about this for a while. Okay. Now, that was my introduction. Now we're going to get to the, the, the deep verses. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I, I thought I'd give you a little introduction at the beginning. This one right there uh, has blown my mind. Is I'll be starting to exercise on my little indoor trampoline, bouncing right there, and I'm thinking, praying in tongues, thinking about blessing, and then I'm um, realizing... How much have I allowed in my body as lies and as darkness to affect me? Why am I not healed as much as I should? Well, I know the person who has kept me from my healing. It's you. I met him. I can't believe you would do that. I know, really. And right there beside me is... <laughs> yeah, we're right there. Oh, guys, but really... How much of the sickness and disease and damage in our bodies and the weaknesses that we have are there because we called them in? Just letting you know. Okay, let's just shift gears here. Go into another verse. Shall we go into Romans? Oh, Romans. Oh, Romans. <sighs> Romans. <Rest of> pressure. <laughs> <laughs> and Romans 8 to boot. Hey, you know, this yeah. is, yay, here it is. You're in for a ride. In for a ride. Romans 8, 10 and 11 says this. But if Christ is in you, the body indeed is dead because of sin. Hmm. Now, wait a minute. If Christ is in you, 
The body indeed is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Mm -hmm. Now, he said this to show that when you get born again, it isn't an immediate physical mm -hmm. salvation that is happening. He says, Christ is in you. The body indeed is dead because of sin. Now, anybody here ever seen that little chart that has spirit, soul, and body in it? <laughs> Never. Never? <laughs> the word to sin go after was expelled out of our spirit. It went into our body. Yeah. This is one of the verses that proves it. Wow. The body is indeed dead because of sin. The sin goes into the body. Got that? Okay. <laughs> but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Now, so you have this thing spread. Life and death, we've seen that. But then it says, But if the spirit of the one having raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, dwells in you, in you, the one having raised the Christ from the dead, will also make your mortal bodies live. Why did he emphasize that? Mm -hmm. Through the indwelling of the Spirit in you. Well, that's heavy. He emphasized, yeah, the body is dead because of sin, but the Holy Spirit is now living in you. And who? Which is the Holy Spirit? You know, the one that raised Jesus from the dead, and the one who raised Jesus from the dead living in you. He can also make your physical, absolute body, mortal body, live. Yes. Wow. Amen. Through the indwelling of the Spirit in you. So just to throw this out there as just hypothetical. Go for it. Would you slide my tea this direction, please? Thank you. This setup and scenario may not be too dissimilar from the same effect that Moses experienced being in the presence of God all the time. He just had so much life, he couldn't die until God took him out. That's right. God had to kill him. Isn't that amazing? And, But God did a miraculous thing for the children of Israel for 40 years in the wilderness. Their shoes yeah. didn't wear out. Their clothes right. didn't wear out. They ate every day. They ate. They, had, they, didn't, they, they didn't have. It's like death was kind of like leaving them all alone except the ones that were supposed to die. Right. <laughs> you see, there's a, a theological point there that we could probably talk about mm -hmm. for a while. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Truman. <Kermit. laughs> a little light bulb just came on there. That was good. It says, oh, I'm in the wilderness. I'm like, yeah, but what happened in the wilderness? Yeah, which one are you? If you're one... You're going to live with no matter what, and the other, you're just going to die. So, which one is it? Taken care of yeah. the whole time. Yeah. The whole time. Oh, that's an interesting concept. We could discuss that for a yeah. while. <laughs> now, let's talk about the Christian. Jennifer. <laughs> yes, indeed. Okay. Ice in the back of your head. <laughs> <laughs> We know this chart, okay? We know that as a Christian, we have the Holy Spirit living in our spirit. And again, that is just beyond my brain. I just, I love that. I just, how do you get that? And our spirit was born, how? By being united with Jesus in His death, burial, and resurrection. Which gives us what? That our spirit is totally saved. Our spirit is totally saved. Now, it has within it what? Light and life and spirit and body. Yeah, just had all the good stuff, right? Cool. Where'd the sin go? The Boom. There it is. And we know the devil in the world has a direct connection to sin that's in the body. So our little chooser right there is really important because of why? Because now we have the Holy Spirit as a direct inside influence and we have sin as a direct inside influence mm -hmm. being affected by the devil in the world. This makes this whole thing really, really crazy. Mm -hmm. Well, let's choose to walk in the Spirit. We've done this a few times before and it gives us life. the mind of the Spirit is life and peace. The mind of the flesh is yeah. death. Mm -hmm. You've seen this a few times, haven't you? <laughs> you want to preach the rest of this while I'm at it? 
No, okay. Oh, I'll, I'll do that. Okay. <laughs> but we do know that once we choose the life, what happens? It comes back on us, doesn't it? If we choose the life, it affects us. Now, what I've never put on this chart is the next arrow, and that is it affects us. The life also gives life to our mortal bodies. Okay. So, <laughs> see, the more we think about this, the the I don't know if it's better or worse it gets. Okay. <laughs> this is one of, huh? Okay. What have we allowed the Holy Spirit to do in us? And yet we speak all the junk about what's happening in our bodies. We reiterate how sick we are. We reiterate how right. bad things are. We re reiterate all the time how we are weaker, worse off, getting old. We're just a yada, yada, yada. And we keep speaking all that stuff. Now, wait a minute. Who said? And that's just it. Who said? Pretty fun, huh? No. No, but <laughs> true. <laughs> but it is true, okay? <laughs> there was a friend of ours I saw posted something this morning that said, my mother always told me, when you're sick, don't say you're sick. Say you're healing. Words have, pow words have power. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I agree with that in every way. Okay. Did you get a picture of that? Anybody need mm -hmm. that? that? I'm done now. It's going to change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you done with that? Never. But I'm done yeah. that right now. Yeah. 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 We've seen. Oh, come on. We're getting yeah, sick of this thing. Okay, okay. Just added another arrow. Yes. Wow. <laughs> All that for an arrow. Okay. We also know that we can choose sin, can't we? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, sin and death are totally linked. Mm -hmm. It's the law of sin and death. Right? Sin and death are totally linked. Hardness of heart traps us in the darkness. See, I could have gone on with that chart and shown the whole thing to the heart, hardness of heart and all the, all that. I decided, nope, this is long enough. Okay. As if the Spirit wasn't in us in that area. Yes. Because He isn't. Because it says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. But where we don't have freedom is a place we don't have the Spirit of the Lord is. And so hardness of heart keeps the Spirit of God from being in our area and that way, the God of peace is not in that area, so our peace is not in that area. The God of hope is not in there, so we have hopelessness in that area. You understand where I'm going. Okay, so the God is not there. Hmm. We must bring that area under submission. And that's how the whole thing starts with the hardness of heart. We've got to make it, submit it, find it, kill it. Okay? Because we house the Holy Spirit. Now, what did Peter say? He says, I am in this tabernacle until the Lord takes me out of it. Okay, So he called it a tabernacle. We house it. It's part of our physical being. We house the Holy Spirit within us. Unbelievable how much that is. We just, that's, that's huge. Okay, That's a huge deal. We won't go, he won't go where we won't let him. God will not go against our free will. Hey, if you don't want Him in that area in your life, He won't go into that area in your life. Just that simple. You want to keep the porn, you can have the porn. You want to keep the drugs, you can have the drugs. You want to keep the alcohol, you can have the alcohol. You want to keep the envy, you have the envy. The what? The envy. The envy, yes. Mm. I heard Bambi, and I was not, that was not going. Okay. I, what's wrong with Bambi? I don't understand. Okay. But envy, you're right. If, if, or any of them. You can go to Galatians 5 and look at the whole list of the fruit of the flesh. You want it? You got it. Okay? Just that simple. But we must allow the Spirit to show us things. Okay? Release Him to live in the rest of us. To, uh, that's the whole purpose of our walk, our maturity. You know, why did not, why did God not heal me in those conferences or at those times when these mighty men of God were doing it? Why? Because He had a plan for me to gain a revelation, which was better than gaining a healing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah, maybe you flowing in me, everybody? Mm -hmm. What would you rather have? See, times people say, "I'd rather have the healing." No, I'd rather have the revelation. Mm -hmm. Okay, the body's gonna die anyway. I want the revelation. Okay, he raised Jesus from the dead. 
<laughs> How powerful is he? Well, that resurrection power is what's available to us. That was what the whole message was like was about last week, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Walking in the resurrection life. Well, the one who raised Christ from the dead dwells within us. And he's the one who's going to make our mortal bodies live. How? By faith. He's not going to force it. Get it? Right. He's not going to force it. He's going to do it. You say he's not going to force it, but he... I think he does try to help us see things, right? Well, sure. And he, he woos us. He convicts yeah. us. He talks about it. How many times have we ignored his voice? Yeah, no, we don't want to bring that up. Okay, it starts... <laughs> Beats you upside the head. Like the guy that said... says, You know, he sold this mule to this guy and he says now you got to treat him with tender loving care Hmm. all you have to do is just say go and he'll go say stop and he'll stop say left he'll turn left say right he'll turn right so the guy gets on the the buckboard and he goes go mule mule doesn't say anything doesn't doesn't move a thing says mule go mule go and he looks at the guy says how come it didn't work and the guy says Said, sorry, got a two before over and went smack and smack that mule right in the middle of the head, whack like this. And he says, You have to first get his attention. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I feel that when I have these little two before prints right here on my forehead so many times. That's what happened to the hair. <laughs> Just wore them off. Okay. (laughs) Yes, it did. All right. Okay. It starts with submitting to him in areas. We got to start by submitting, and then he can convict us of other areas. It got. It's got to be a progressive walk in a relationship. Ask what the lie is. See, this is one of the things. And how many times we've done this in in the office here? Is that people go, "Why is this happening to me?" Well, I don't know. Why don't we ask Jesus? And what does he do? He tells us where the lie is. You go, well, that was simple. Couldn't we have done that at home? Yes, but would we have? Well, we haven't so far, so we come in. Okay. (laughs) The way it is. Okay. Be prepared, because once you ask him what the lie is, it won't be pretty. He's going to show you. Okay. (laughs) Huh. Right? (laughs) Okay. That's... Two passages down, two to go. Here we go. 2 Corinthians 4, 10 through 11. <laughs> Anybody know what this one is? Just no. we've, we've done this. Yeah, here we go. Always bearing about the dying of the Lord Jesus in the body. But also the life of Jesus may be revealed in our body. For we who live are always being delivered up to death on account of Jesus, but also the life of Jesus may be revealed Hmm. in our mortal flesh. (laughs) Now, let's think about this for a second. Always bearing about the dying of the Lord Jesus in our body. Now, do we house the Holy Spirit? Yes. Yes. Is he the one that raised Jesus from the dead? Yes. Yes. So do we bear about the dying of the Lord Jesus in the body? In essence, in our spirit, yes. However, until we apply that into our own life, we're not bearing the death of the Lord Jesus in our body. How in the world are we going to show everybody else the dying of the Lord Jesus when our own body is out of control? Do you want me to back up on that one? Oh, I got it. You got that one. Okay. You don't have to back up. You got it. Okay. Are we... <laughs> I, I thought there was going to be a light and fluffy message is what I really thought. Okay. The life of Jesus. Light and fluffy? Light and fluffy. So yes, I am. <laughs> Do I know them? Yeah, I hear other people preach them. It drives me crazy. Okay. Bearing about the dying of the Lord Jesus in our body. What does that mean? That means others will be able to see how Jesus died by looking at our bodies. Ouch. But the life of Jesus can be revealed, manifest in our bodies. For we who live are always being delivered up to death on the count of Jesus. And this isn't just persecution, folks. This is... We're being delivered up to death on the count of Jesus. That the life of Jesus may be revealed where? In our mortal flesh. 
It's amazing how he has emphasized that body revealed in our body in our mortal flesh. He's hammering it over and over again. Why? Because we have got to live a life that others see us. Right. Wow. And they see our body. Right. Right. Okay. So, so body is like literally physical body. That's what it says in your mortal flesh. You can't get any more physical body statement. I wasn't sure if it meant like something else. It does. Okay. So it must show up in our bodies. It has to. This requires more faith than healing. I'm letting that stew for a second. It requires more faith than faith for healing. It's faith about having Jesus being effectively working out through our mortal bodies to show what he is. Okay. This is what? The crucifixion of our flesh. That's exactly what it's all about. Uh, Galatians 5.24, in case somebody needed to know where that was. Dying to self. Death to the death that lives in us. Such a complicated statement. <laughs> I know, but it makes sense and you understood it and that's scary, isn't it? <laughs> death to the death that lives in us. So life can be revealed, which means manifested shown up where people can see the effect of it okay this is simple but not easy mm-hmm. now have you ever noticed you, you walk around and you're moping around because you're sick and you're telling everybody I believe in Jesus Christ <laughs> I hurt so bad and my joints hurt and my head hurts and I feel so bad I feel so tired all the time <gasps> don't you want Jesus to <laughs> Wasn't that just wrong? (laughs) There for others to see and recognize. Christians must be different in all ways. In all the ways. Showing up. Okay? Okay. Three verses down. One passage to go. One to go. Here we go. Go to James. There's nothing but light and fluffy in James. So here we go. In James it liar. says, Liar. <laughs> For we all stumble in many ways. If one does not stumble in word, this one is a mature man, also able also to bridle the whole body. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> or just wait a minute. Did you just say? Yeah, well, we all stumble in many ways, but if anyone does not stumble in word, now we're right back at this old tongue thing. Mm-hmm. This whole word and what you speak thing. This one is a mature man. Able also to do what? Bridle the whole body? I tell my body what's going on and it obeys me? <laughs> okay. <laughs> See? Only four passages. That's all I've done this today. That's all I'm going to do. This is it. This passage continues about the tongue. That's all the passage is all about. Huh? Yes, yes, it is. Mostly about its misuse. Yep. Okay. <laughs> and the abuse thereof. Okay. Our tongue is a consummate weapon. Thing is a powerful, powerful weapon. Take that picture, because that's no more there left. Okay. Um, when the cameras come down, I click on and go on. <laughs> the tongue and the bridling of the whole body means what? Now, if I have a sickness, a weakness, a problem, that means I can bridle the body. I can make that body part obey and go where I want it to go. Isn't that what bridling is all about? Mm -hmm. Making the horse go where you want it to go? Mm -hmm. Stop, start, and not have to hit it with a two before. (laughs) (laughs) The whole practice of bridling a horse is introducing pressure points and mild discomfort to make the horse go where you want it to go. Mm-hmm. So for bar- bridling the body... <laughs> I think that works rather well, doesn't it? You know? Mild discomfort. Um, I have long since talked about how I was getting to the point where I couldn't walk up and down a stairway without much pain and had to just stop and say, okay, there's something wrong. I was cursing my knees. And I kept speaking bad. My knees are bad, my knees are bad, my knees are bad. And I just kept cursing them. And I'm not going to do that anymore. And so I had to, I had to repent 
and I had to actually apologize to my knees, but I started speaking blessing over my knees and it has changed everything, okay? I now can go anywhere I need to go. I love that part. I've had other parts of my body that, okay, what's going on here? I keep blessing it and blessing it and blessing it. I have certain parts right now that I am still blessing. I'm still walking on. I am still talking to. We are having major discussions on a fairly regular basis. <laughs> I'm trying to bridle these things in my body. Okay? I get it. I'm not totally there yet. I'm not the only, you know, I'm not saying I have conquered this 100%. No, I'm still working on it, guys, but this is what I do on a regular basis because I am fighting these things to get these things right. Okay? And I, there's com discomforts in my body that I'm fighting on a regular basis and I am speaking to, I am talking about, asking the Lord where this came from, mm -hmm. repenting from everything I can think mm -hmm. of, okay, and some things that I can't. I don't know, just, you know, generic. <laughs> but I've got to get this thing done. What do you speak over your body? Okay, what do you speak? Wow, you create with your tongue. And we have done whole messages on this, whole series on the power of the tongue. How That's how God created. He spoke it. How do you create? You speak it. Okay, this is the whole idea. What have you spoken into existence? Mm -hmm. And how many times we say, well, I'm just getting older. Okay? And I just, I, I fight that premise. Okay? Just yesterday, we were at a birthday party and all the brothers and we're all sitting around talking about how they're getting older and they're all just cursing everything they could talk about I just wasn't going to get in on it okay they're not believers and so it was impossible for me to bring this up to them about what they're talking about but I just sat there and said I'm not going to be saying the same things you know and one of them said we're just getting older right and looked at me and wanted an answer <laughs> Okay. And I said, well, you might be. Ha! <laughs> Made it a joke, but it still was something I wasn't going to speak yeah, that out. Yeah. Okay, and so, <laughs> that was Tom. <laughs> okay. We were just talking about this, and Terry Foy, Savelle Foy, said, if, to catch your tongue, say this phrase afterwards. And that's exactly the way I want it. Whatever yeah. said, it'll smack you in the head. Yeah, well, boy, that would do it, yes. So what lie have you received and fostered? And then continued by speaking it. Okay, what lie? This passage talks, it goes on about talking about the blessing and the cursing. And it says that that shouldn't come from the same source. Is there salt water and, mm. and fresh water coming out of the same hole in the ground? It shouldn't be cursing and blessing coming out of the same mouth. In other words... Stop the cursing. Mm -hmm. Didn't mean stop the blessing so that only <laughs> cursing comes out. No, it's stop the cursing so that only blessing comes out. Folks, this is mandatory. This is something that we got to be starting to do. Yeah. Okay? We just got to. So maybe we should talk to a different source. <laughs> huh. hmm. So what does Jesus say about your body? Have you ever asked him? You ever talked about it? I mean, he's what? He didn't give you a list of topics that were off the list, right? Mm -hmm. No, he says, no, he's open to talking about it. So what, what do you talk to him about your body? Okay. Let's talk about doctors and symptoms. Okay. Doctors and symptoms. Okay, let's talk about doctors. Does this mean that we should never go to a doctor? No. 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 By all means. And so many of us here go to Dr. Joe and we just think he's just wonderful. Okay. That's neat. What does he do? He helps remind me what things are true in the physical realm that are truly good and healthy and good or bad. Okay. We talk about this stuff. Okay. It's really bad to sit there and, and, and bless your body and then eat poison. Okay. <laughs> You know, that's non-conducive. Mm -hmm. So there's certain, you know, we've got to try to take care of ourselves. And the Bible does talk about exercising and that it does have profit. And eat, eat well. And, you know, yeah. yeah. So, but uh, what are we doing? Okay. Well, we're right in the middle of a pandemic. A what? Pandemic. Okay. Or a planned -demic. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wow, we got some political people in this room. All right, so a, a scam enemy. 
<laughs> okay, this thing is just I, okay. We know that there's also what are they trying to do? Every time you hear people talk about it, they're fostering fear, fostering fear, fostering fear. I refuse to be a fear monger. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to be a faith monger. Yes. Okay, I want to be one that promotes that. So I'm not going to speak that COVID-19 has power over me. No. I'm going to speak that I have power over it. Yes. I'm going to speak that I am the light, the life, the mm -hmm. spirit. I am these things and love. Okay, I know that I have the spirit within me. He radiates out. He emanates. He emits. He transmits. He Whatever words you want to thesaurusize yourself into. Okay, that's that's a new one. Okay, but to put out there, we, we, we should push this out. We should have the positive power of these things. Okay? That's right. We should be the ones affecting the room, not being affected by the room. Amen. Okay? Been saying this. Mm -hmm. Doctors and symptoms. Okay, if I have symptoms, what do I do? I'm going to talk to it. I'm going to talk to this. Little things about what's happening, okay? Uh, last time I went in to, for a bowel meridian with Dr. Kristen, okay, she told me on my prescription. I just gone through the trauma time, a little heavy duty thing, and so it had showed up on my bio meridian that my neurotransmitters were not firing on all cylinders. Mm -hmm. I needed to, and so she put on her prescription, bless your neurotransmitters. That was my prescription, is to bless my neurotransmitters. She also said, you need more serotonin. Mm -hmm. You bless your body with serotonin. She says, and the way you get that out of your food is you get it out of cacao and tryptophan. I says, let me get this straight. You're prescribing chocolate and turkey. And she says, yes, I am. I says, yes, best prescription ever. Okay, so, yeah. So, <laughs> I don't know what happened to my serotonin levels, but my neurotransmitters were blessed all over the place. Okay, so, um, this was fun. Okay, so that was, uh, it was a beautiful thing. But she knew what we believe, and she put on the prescription to bless your neurotransmitters with serotonin. Awesome. And so I've been doing that, right? And there's a, a little, other little areas that I have in my little, that came across. Best these, we had a grand time. Guess what? I get to go back in for Bio Meridian tomorrow. Guess what I am doing to my little selfishness <laughs> there? I am busting myself all over the place and I'm <laughs> going there. I am pursuing to have greens, five and a half pages of green. That's what I'm pursuing. So we're going to find out here directly. Okay. Doctors and symptoms. Use them to show what areas need help. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't know. So oh, you have a problem. You go and the doctor tells you, "Oh, there's what's going on." Oh, gives you an exact thing to bless. That's okay. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. Okay. So, what is affecting me in these areas? I've got to find out. It helps me helps us get our thoughts into the right path. I want to get my thoughts into the right path. Okay. Amen. I just have to get them right. Mm -hmm. It's. Uh, not a death sentence. Okay? I have a life sentence. People want to say these things? Okay, I, that's cool. Okay? So, a target for... Huh? I, I didn't. You know, you, I didn't picture that. Screen. I, I'm sorry. I just I there you go. I was listening so hard. Yeah, I get it. It's all good. <laughs> a target for our faith and tongue. We have now something to give us a target. Okay, I didn't know how to, to bless my neurotransmitters with serotonin until I had a target. Now she says, here's what you need to do because you're having effect by this. Boom. Now, oh, cool. I'm going to, you know, ask, gives me something to shoot for. Bring it under compliance to the Spirit of God. Okay, Lord, I have this issue. Let's bring it to him and talk to him about it. Okay. For those of you who know, I'm still talking to God about the diastasis recti that is happening in my abdomen, and we are fighting this thing tooth and nail, and I'm still blessing it all over the place, laying hands on it, talking to Jesus about it. It's just go what's going to happen. It's going by the wayside. It's going to go down. Okay? I'm going to make sure that's what I'm doing. You're blessed with high life and health and peace. You bless these things. Okay? How much peace do you need? Uh, more. <laughs> just We'll just go with more. Okay? <laughs> Be quick to repent and target it. Mm. Quick to repent. Condemnation will always kill you. You don't want any condemnation. You don't get anything of that. So condemnation will always do it. So make it positive instead of negative. Instead of, I curse you, arthritis in the name of Jesus. Oh, shut up. No. Bless, don't curse. We're not Christian witches. 
<laughs> but that's what it is. Yes. Okay, well, so, is. bless, don't curse. You know, I bless this. My, I, when I say this, is my body is now a cancer-free zone. My body is an arthritis-free zone. It's not allowed in here. I'm not cursing anything. I'm blessing everything. My body is an inflammation-free zone. Hmm. Can't I be allowed? Infection-free. Virus-free of the bad viruses. You know, your body is, your viome is made of 45% viruses that's already in your body. Mm -hmm. Wait, what did you say about? Your bioviome is your, your uh, immune system thing. Mm -hmm. It could be 45% of those in your body right now are viruses that you have encountered and you've conquered. Amen. And bacteria too. 90% mm -hmm. of yeah. bacteria. See, yeah, all this. Think of this in the positive way, not the negative. Okay? Right. I just, that's a, it may take some time and effort. Well, let it. Or a lot of time and effort. Or a lot of time and effort. But whatever it takes, get after it, okay? So, hmm. be consistent and determined. Nothing happened immediately. I love this. I, you know, I, I see things going. Some things do happen pretty quickly, and some things don't. But nothing happened immediately. Now what? Who cares? Keep on it, okay? That may be something he's showing you. There's a reason why it didn't happen quickly. There might be something else that he's trying to get you to learn, trying to get you to understand. He didn't bring the sickness and disease, but he is bringing the revelation on how to get rid of it. Okay? Proverbs 3.5 Trust before understanding. Mm -hmm. Trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. The trust comes before the understanding comes. And for most of us, we like the understanding before we will trust. Mm -hmm. And God says, not that direction. That's true. It's the other way. Trust first, understanding comes later. <coughs> you will reap a harvest if you do not faint. Right out of Galatians chapter 6, sowing and reaping. Mm -hmm. You will reap a harvest if you don't faint. What do you have to do? Sowing and reaping. What is the crop you're having now? The crop is the sickness, disease, or functional that's bad news. So what do you have to do? You have to kill that crop and sow new seed. You'll reap a harvest if you don't faint. Right. Okay? Sowing and reaping is the strongest principle in the Scripture. Mm -hmm. Absolutely amazing. Focus on Him and His realm. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's a higher authority and function. Mm -hmm. Higher authority and function. Is that making sense? Mm -hmm. Totally. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Wait, is that the last one? On that one, you want it back? There, Thank you. there it is. Thank you. Okay. <sighs> so, what is God's true will? He wants you blessed. Mm -hmm. that is his, that's His will. Mm -hmm. He wants you healthy? Yes, He does. Yeah. <laughs> he wants you sick and moaning and groaning? Mm, no. <laughs> but, he will take you through that sickness of moaning and groaning to bring you revelation. It's the best thing. Receive truth and apply it. Receive truth. Apply it. Speak life into existence. That's the way it should be. Okay. Peace and joy in Jesus. And since you're all wondering how I'm going to do that, here it is. Okay. Just click. There it is. All right. <laughs> a spiral in Trinity. There you go. So that's it. That's that's it for the day. Did that give you enough to think on? Oh, yeah. That's four of the several verses that I found in this. And so I realized today I'm going to have to probably do at least one more on on showing where the scripture is on this thing. It's it's valuable, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Okay. This is huge. So. It's funny because the Holy Spirit this morning in prayer revealed to me exactly where the arthritis is coming from through the death of my mother cursing me saying I should have been aborted when I was a, a child oh. wow. there and you I go taking that lie in and I have lived under the sentence of death there you go yeah sounds to me like a I great mean, victory like, that's, yeah. that's awesome and then you just kind of confirm there you go with the scripture that's amazing and that yeah. that is totally amazing okay any other questions comments Anybody? Thank you, thank you. Comment. I'm <laughs> listening to all my online people. Questions, comments, anything? 
Well, I guess then you're just forcing me to have to pray. <laughs> so that's the way you're going to be about it. Darn. Okay, here we go. Father God, we do thank you, Lord. <laughs> We've got a lot to think about, a lot to put our heads around. But Lord, we thank you that you have given us our bodies. You have, you have given us something that we can have here on this planet to show the life and resurrection of Jesus Christ to other people, whether they're believers or not. Lord, this is pretty amazing. So, Lord, help us to learn this and to know it, and we will give you the praise and the glory for it. We give you praise in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 All righty. Wasn't that fun? This is fun. It's good. This is like this has been thumping my head all week. So it's just been it's been fun. So. I know, it's a trickle-down thing, you know. Thump my head, I thump yours, it's all good. So, <laughs> so um, anyway, I need to apologize to everybody. Uh, since I got everybody in the room here, I need to throw an apology your direction. Um, we did 18 weeks on energy. Wow. Okay. I didn't know where I was going with it. Okay, because I was just, it's just, and I was starting to just wow, what am I doing with this, Lord? And he just wasn't showing me. And so I, I talked to Mike Sharp. And I says, Mike, I just, you know, we, we talk all the time. So it's just one of those neat things. And I says, I just don't know about where I'm heading with all this. I says, it's, it's wild, but I'm, I'm not sure I'm getting clear on what I'm doing with it. And he says, are you sure this isn't just for you? I went, well, I hate that idea, but I can't tell you anything else. And so I... I pretty much rejected that and just walked away. And then we went up to Greeley, and I was up uh, having a campfire with my son. And and we, I told you that the the way I can always make it rain in Greeley is right. by <laughs> starting a campfire. And yep. so Jared and I were out in the rain in a campfire, and just him and I, because nobody else was, everybody else was too smart to come out in the rain. So we were sitting there talking and. I was just telling him about the, some of the things I was going on, and he says, "Well, Dad, do you think that maybe the, the Lord just gave that for you?" <laughs> oh, two of them! Wow. I says, "My son, I love you dearly. I right now want to slap you so hard. I just <laughs> just want to cuff you one time." So I came back, and I was looking through my stuff, and I I pulled up number one of the Energy series, and I was going through it, and you know what it said, right on the very second. The second screen said, and this is for Lietti. I didn't put it on the screen. So this is for Lietti. Wow. I said, because I told you, I said, this is, I'm trying to learn this. And so I'm teaching this so I can help learn this. And I said, it's also, so we're not going back to energy anytime soon until the <laughs> Lord clears me on that one. And so for those who are waiting for the end of that series, wait on. <laughs> Because it's going to happen sometime. About that. But uh, so anyway, my apology is that we were heading down somewhere, and it looks like I was, and I'm just, and so just deal with it. I'm sorry, it's my fault, but <laughs> we learned a lot. Mm -hmm. We learned a lot. I learned massive amounts. But um, so anyway, I don't know where all we're heading, but I the apology. Gravy on top was really good. The what? The gravy on top was the really good. Gravy on top was good. I like the yeah, the, all the sauce down believe is really good. Like it. It. Anyway, so I don't think any of your audience will complain. Nobody's complaining. Okay, well, anyway, forgive me as as is needed. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going on. I don't know where we're going next. Okay, we got another one of the. I have no idea. So like we're just uh, God's God thing for. Yeah. So anyway, God bless all of you, and uh, we thank you all for being participants and uh, victims and, and victims. <laughs> <laughs> These are my friends, so right? Fun. Okay. Who needs enemies, right? Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> Not so much, buddy. Not so much. With friends like these, enemies would be right. welcomed. <laughs> would be welcomed. <laughs> you guys are you're all hilarious. All right. God bless you all, and we'll talk to you all soon. And uh, we'll see you then. We are now free of the Zoom people. Oh, thank God. Those Zoom people. It, it's, just, it's just the peanut gallery. Just the peanut gallery. <laughs> just the live. So, so in all else fails.
<laughs> have a thin mint. Oh, not That's good enough. Comfort food. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yes. Exhibit A. <laughs> Please destroy the evidence. <laughs> I'm, I'm working on one at a time. You know, the second part that the spirit showed me this morning was that I have used ice cream as a comfort food which is the worst thing that I can actually put into my body as far as the arthritis and the inflammation is concerned. So don't kill the arthritis. It's like, sweet cow, goodbye. It's exactly nope. what that's Actually, exactly what I'm saying... What he said. But what I'm saying is arthritis and inflammation, goodbye. Yeah. 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 Because the Lord will bring you a time when you can go back to sweet cow. Exactly. Okay, but because that's this, not the issue. At this moment. Yeah, it's not the sweet cow that yeah. caused it. Right. That's not going to be the healing. It's just right. going to help alleviate some of the pain and damage. Exactly. But you've mm -hmm. got to get rid of the arthritis and the inflammation and the damage that comes. And when that happens, exactly. the Lord and you will have a, just amazing this a sweet cow like, wow. experience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it. And we can eat it together. Yeah. 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 Right. right. So. <laughs> so. As things come. It's just amazing. Thank Amen. God. Yeah, I yes. thought a lot of cool. where you were going mm -hmm. was into fasting. I could. And, well, the thing I started thinking about in fasting is, fasting is just not food. Oh, heavens no. No, no it can be in yeah. television. Everything. It can be Everything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, oh. Definitely. One of the churches...